Giovanna Garzoni was one of the most accomplished botanical artists in the 17th century and is today recognised as a pioneer in the still life genre. At the peak of her career, Garzoni's artworks were so well received by the public that she was able to ask any price for them. Today, there is a renewed interest in Garzoni's life and works. She was the subject of an acclaimed exhibition in 2020. Let's learn more about Garzoni's life. Garzoni was born in 1600 in the Marche region of Italy into an artistic family of Venetian origin. Although little is known for sure about Garzoni's artistic training, it is likely that she studied as an apprentice with her uncle, who was also a painter. Like many women artists at the time, she received an elite education in music, literature and art, which would later allow her to enter the highest courts in Europe. Garzoni grew up in Rome, and it was there that she had her first commission that we know of in 1616, when a chemist commissioned her to paint a herbarium, a collection of dried plant specimens that are stored, catalogued and studied. In early 17th century Europe, the expansion of trade and exploration beyond the continent, as well as scientific and technological developments such as the invention of the microscope, meant that distinctions between art and natural history were blurred. Garzoni's ability to meticulously depict botanical subject matters would therefore make her hugely popular with courts and scientific academies in many European cities. Dr. Sheila Barker, curator of the 2020 exhibition at the Uffizi, reflects on Garzoni's art. She evinced a real curiosity and a real affinity for novel things and new things and strange things, and she didn't segregate them into a kind of cold world of display. In her art and in her life, she was trying to understand her place in relation to the rest of this big, fascinating world that people were in the process of discovering. Between around 1618 and 1620, Garzoni visited the Medici court in Florence, where she probably met Artemisia Gentileschi, another well-known female painter at the time. Here is one of Garzoni's early self-portraits. She represents herself as a muse or as an androgynous Apollo, holding a stringed vial with a laurel wreath on her head. Italian women artists from the previous century, such as Sofonisba Anguissola and Lavinia Fontana, had developed a new type of portrait genre, depicting the woman artist with a musical instrument. Garzoni is clearly participating in this genre, showing off her artistic skills and her elite education. As a young adult, Garzoni lived in Venice for some years. We don't have precise dates for her arrival, but it was probably from around 1616 until 1630 when she moved to Naples. In Venice, she went to a calligraphy school taught by Giacomo Rogni, and during her studies, she produced a book of calligraphy, which she called Book of Chancery Cursive Characters. Art historian Aoife Cosgrove researched Garzoni's calligraphy book, noting that she was far from the only female calligraphy master active in 17th century Europe. For example, there was Maria Strick in the Netherlands and Esther Ingalls in England and Scotland. Garzoni's book contains 42 individual sheets of calligraphy, ranging from excerpts of religious and historical texts, letters to various recipients and some combinations of writing and images, like watercolour paintings of animals or a continuous line drawing of a ship. Cosgrove notes the similarities between the layout of the pages in the calligraphy book and the compositions of Garzoni's still-life paintings later on. In the early 1630s, after a brief stay in Naples and then Rome, Garzoni moved to Turin, where Christina of France was eager to employ her as the miniaturist for the court there. The first known portrait miniature of a black person was made by Garzoni in 1635. This portrait depicts Zaga Christ, a self-proclaimed prince from Ethiopia who converted to Christianity and toured European courts. Zaga Christ may have commissioned this miniature himself as a gift to the French court. Garzoni left Turin in 1637 and, over the next two decades, apart from a couple of years in Paris, she moved back and forth between Rome and Florence. Although Garzoni had been married in the early 1620s to a Venetian portrait artist, Tiberio Tinelli, the marriage was quickly annulled and she never remarried. Instead, she would travel freely as long as her brother acted as her chaperone. 
During these decades, her main patrons were the Medici family. The leading Florentine family were passionate collectors of specimens of flora, fauna, objects and curiosities from around the world, ranging from seashells from Central America to Chinese porcelain. When the Medici family commissioned artworks from Garzoni, they were, at least in part, making a statement about the global reach of their family and their access to expensive and rare goods through trade and colonial expansion. We may recall Garzoni's words in a letter to a patron years earlier in 1618. See, O curious eye, epitomised in a brief and small canvas the greatness of the universe. Some of Garzoni's still-life miniature paintings that were commissioned by the Medici family between 1650 and 1662 include Plate with White Beans, showing a naturalistic study of beans at various stages of decay, Still Life with a Basket of Fruit, a Vase of Carnations and Shells on a Table, Chinese Plate with Artichokes and Strawberries, and Yixing vase containing diverse flowers on a marble table between two shells with butterflies above. Garzoni finally settled in Rome in 1651, but continued to produce work for the Florentine court. In Rome, Garzoni also went to the Accademia di San Luca, where she took part in events and discussions which aimed to educate, connect and professionalise the painters, sculptors and architects of Rome. Today, there are two important manuscript notebooks by Garzoni. One is housed in the Rare Books Library in Washington, D.C., in which we see a self-portrait when Garzoni was in her old age, and a number of botanical studies. Another notebook, housed in the Accademia di San Luca in Rome, includes flower studies and still lives. As more people learn about Garzoni, there will hopefully continue to be more research into her artistic career and into her remarkable artworks. We've recently published a new article on our website, athenaartfoundation.org, where you can learn even more about Garzoni, and there's also a general catalogue of books we highly recommend.